Hi guys, welcome to Tidal Gardens. If you're new here, welcome. We are a coral farm in Copley, Ohio, and here we talk about all things reef related. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. This video is all about secret stashes. You know how at your local fish store, sometimes there's like a back room where nobody's allowed to go, maybe it's only for VIPs or something where there's a secret collection of not for sale corals? Yeah, you know that room. Well, we get asked all the time if there's a secret stash of corals here. And well, I guess yeah there is. As you can imagine, we're always on the lookout for some really nice pieces that when we finally get them, it can take a while to grow them out before we're ever able to offer them up for sale. In this video, I want to give you guys an exclusive glimpse of five corals that we've been growing out that we haven't offered for sale for one reason or another. So let's jump right into it. The first coral on this list is the Scorpion King Favites. What attracted me to this coral was its amazing bright yellow color with this thin fuchsia colored accent. Both of those colors are uncommon on their own, and to find both on a Favites like this is a really big deal, especially when both colors fluoresce brightly under actinic light. This coral has a bit of a funny story behind it. I picked it up on my first ever trip to our friends at Cherry Corals last year. They previously picked it up from another friend, Ward's Aquatics, the year before. Anyhow, I paid full retail for this frag because Cherry at the time only had a couple of tiny half inch frags and it was kind of a big deal to get them to part with just one of the two. Once I brought it back, the staff here was not all that impressed with it. It looked just okay in daylight and it really browned out adjusting to our water chemistry. At the time we had really high phosphates and nitrates and it definitely did these corals no favors. Anyhow, this coral looked really bad for easily three months. One time, it looked like something took a bite out of it, and I suspect it was a starfish that did it. At this coral's low point, everyone here was making fun of me for buying it. Even my mom got in on the action. But I would be vindicated. Once we got this guy into quarantine in the new building, the improved water chemistry made a world of difference. It regained its stellar color, and it's probably tripled in size since then. It's got a little bit of time left in quarantine, but once it settles into its new home in the grow out tanks, I'm excited about getting it fragged up and offered for sale. Next coral. So high-end Acropora are all the rage right now, and there are some amazing specimens out there. The stick heads are all out there trying to get their home wreckers and Walt Disney's, and I know the feeling. There's a bunch of color morphs that I'm on the lookout for, so trust me, I get it. I will share with you my favorite Acropora that I'm growing here. It's a smooth skin variety that we call an infernal Acropora. I love the color on this thing. It's got a purple and green base and red and orange tips. Like every Acropora, it can change color dramatically depending on the lighting that it's given. We've kept this infernal Acropora under a bank of T5 lights before, and also under LEDs. We've seen it change from a mostly dark purple color with pink tips to a much more green body with orange and red tips. Personally, I like a balance of all four of the colors. Also, the nice thing about the infernal Acropora is that its colors hold up in daylight. Sometimes these really high-end acros are pretty much actinic only. Like there's certain ones that are very famous, I'm not going to name too many names, but in daylight they don't look like anything. It's only under pure actinic that you see all those great colors. The infernal, however, looks great under actinic and daylight. We've only ever offered this coral once, and it's sold that same day. Hopefully we'll have some nice ones available soon though, because we have them doing very well in our quarantine system waiting to get into the new building's grow out tanks. The number three coral on this list probably doesn't need much of an introduction, which I guess would make this the worst kept secret in a secret coral stash. But it is the glitter bomb Ganiopora. As soon as we put it on the site, I immediately got barraged with texts from friends and customers. As luck would have it, 
My friend Will, whose tank has been featured several times on this channel, was the first to check out on the site. There was no preferential treatment there, I promise. I told everyone who was interested that day that they just better hurry. That's all I said, just better hurry. Anyhow, this coral, of all the high-end frags that we carry, is the one that gets the most inquiries on its feature availability. And I can see what people like about it. Ganyapora in general have a very attractive flower-like appearance, and they've got this beautiful swaying motion in the current. This particular color morph is amazing because of that speckled pattern. You don't see that too often. There are brighter Ganyapora out there, but in our collection, there's no other one that gets the attention that the glitter bomb gets. Coral number four on this list is actually a symbiotic relationship between a few cool inverts. Also, it isn't exactly something that we're stashing away. It's more like this is going to cost a fortune and we'd rather just keep it around because we happen to like it. What we're referring to, of course, is this Bisma worm rock. Sometimes they're called a Christmas tree rock. Over the years, the original parietes that normally grows on this rock has been overtaken by blue pavona, and the Christmas tree worms living on the rock didn't seem to mind it quite so much. The rock has also picked up some Hawaiian feather duster worms. They're not as colorful as the Christmas tree worms, but these do breed in captivity, which I haven't seen from the Christmas trees unfortunately. Lastly, we discovered that there are also these black and blue pagarita hermit crabs living in these rocks. I'm used to seeing the bright yellow variants of these crabs in Astriopora, but they do come in other colors and they do make their homes in different types of corals. So when you start to add it all up, the worms, the crabs, the different types of corals on this rock, there's just a lot going on on this rock and we just decided to keep them. It would be a pain to ship and it would cost a fortune, so here they will stay. The last coral on this list is the Meltdown Favia. My friend Nathan is a high-end coral collector, and he's been featured a few times on this channel as well, both his tank and also as an in-person guest on our monthly live shows. Anyway, he's got a lot of really, really gorgeous corals that he's picked up over the years in a frag tank right next to his display tank. There's one coral in there that hands down stands out over all the others, and it is this Meltdown Favia. Nathan picked it up from cherry corals years ago, and it is one of the slowest growing LPS out there. I almost never see frags of it available anywhere, and I've been bugging him for a frag pretty much every time I see his tank. Well, finally I got some, and I am super happy that it's finally in my collection. Given its slow growth rate, it might be a little while before I have any to sell, but it will be worth it. Of all the favia I have ever seen, this is the one. The colors are incredibly intense, and the size of the polyps are crazy. Right now we're feeding this guy daily, so hopefully it will speed up the growth and maintain that awesome coloration. Alright guys. That pretty much does it for the sneak peek at what we have cooking in the back. I invite you to check us out online at TidalGardens.com and see what we have in stock. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please give this video a like, and if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to this channel for more updates. Until next time, happy reefing.